All right, folks. Sessions after lunch is always very interesting. So uh, thank you for stopping by here. And I hope you guys are not sleeping, but attending to the session. So before I get started, how many of you are familiar with AppSource? Did you just hear about AppSource in the keynote? Was that it? Or ha have you, are you used to AppSource? You know what AppSource is? No? OK. Uh, how, do, how many developers do we have here? All right. So, so I do want to make sure, because it's Build Conference, we don't disappoint the devs. So I'll spend a little bit of a time on what AppSource is, just to give you guys a, a feel of what AppSource is. And then we'll get right into how you can build a test drive or a trial experience for AppSource. OK? So uh, I'm Sheffy. I'm Program Manager for Apps, AppSource. So uh, AppSource went live uh, last July. So it was launched by Scott and Satya at WPC last time. And AppSource is basically the destination for a business user to find applications on Microsoft Platform. And as you can see here, a lot of content, or some part of the content that I'm actually going to share here is going to be pre-release. -pre so by the time we ship it, things might look a little different. It might be a little different or a, a variation of what we show out here. Be because you guys are devs, I do want to make sure that we show you uh, the latest and greatest of what we have. So since, based on the show of hands, I'll talk a little bit about AppSource. So folks who are new here and who've just heard about AppSource and Keynote gets a feel of what AppSource is. And then I'll get into uh, how you can build a trial, trial experience uh, based on what your app contains. Like, is it an Azure app, or is it a Dynamics 365 app, and all that. So this is, this. I promise developers out here, this is going to be my one slide that basically talks uh, talk, talks about what's AppSource. But for the rest, rest of the gang who's here to actually learn more about AppSource, this, this slide will, will become useful. So as Microsoft, uh, AppSource becomes a single destination for a business user to discover applications uh, from our partners that's either uh, built on Microsoft technology or integrates with Microsoft technology. So what that means is, let's say your application is actually uh, built on Azure, and you want to actually get your applications out there for the customers to discover it, acquire it, and you actually want to go to market, you you'd list your application in AppSource. Okay? But let's say you're not running fully in Azure, but let's say you're running in AWS. And you're still, uh, you, you integrate with uh, Microsoft e ecosystem, and you actually want to list your, and you want to still go to market, you integrate with Microsoft with respect, let's say you enable AAD single sign-on and all that, and you still go to market with AppSource. So this becomes your primary go-to-market uh, story for an app publisher or a partner for Microsoft. OK? So as you can see here, uh, irrespective of which uh, which layer of this uh, di diagram you actually uh, integrate with. So it can be you build your app directly on the Azure platform. Or let's say you started integrating and started building apps on top of CDS. Or uh, you actually build application for Power Apps, Flow, uh, CDS. So we just made Power Apps av available through AppSource as well. So is there anyone here who actually uses Power Apps? Or have used Power Apps in the past? OK. So if you are. Uh, an ISV, and you actually have a Power App, and you want to actually go to market with that Power App, and you want to make that Power App discoverable to end users to acquire, so so that they can work with you to actually uh, build that build power, a similar Power App for their com company. You can list listed in apps, app source. So same story continues across the stack. So it can be IoT applications, it can be Cortana intelligence app application. We have close to 15 to 20 Cortana intelligence applications as well, which is from, from our partners, which is made, av made available in AppSource. So irrespective of where you integrate within the Microsoft stack, AppSource becomes your go-to-market story. OK? Uh, so this is where we stand right now. We have close to 2,300 plus applications in apps, AppSource right now. And this is late, latest uh, with the announcement we did at uh, Build Today, which basically talks about App source apps being available, which includes the Office apps and all that. So right now we have close to 2,300 apps, and I'm hoping at the end of this session, uh, you you guys will actually go in and start uh, doing doing the groundwork to get your app listed in App Source as well. Okay. So I do want to uh, jump right into the the trial experience and how you can actually build the trial experience. So as you can see here, App Source supports. Uh, three kinds of trial experience. So let me just do a quick demo of AppSource. How many of you guys want to see AppSource first and then? All right, so I see a few hands here. So let's just 
go with a quick demo of app shows and hopefully my network is working fine. I walked in and my network was not behaving well, but I think the connection helped. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, it's very easy to get to app source, appsource.com, and we know that you're not going to remember appsource.com, or we, we hope you do, but let's say even if you don't uh, rem remember apps, appsource.com, uh, irrespective of where you are doing your day-to-day -day -day op operation. When I say you, where an uh, end user of Microsoft is doing their day-to-day -day operation. So it can be within Dynamics 365. Uh, how many of you use Power BI here? You do? OK. Uh, and how, how often do you guys get a content pack from there for Power BI? So uh, you may unknowingly be using App Source. You know? So within all of this first party, uh, ecosystem that's out there, when you actually try to get more apps, all these experiences within the in-app gallery is also powered by AppSource. So, so you might not go to AppSource.com as a, a website to actually, or a site or a portal to actually get the app, but irrespective of uh, how your app is built or what your app is, we make your app available contextually to all of our end users. So when you list with AppSource, it's not like you are listing in some portal which is somewhere, and a user needs to go to that portal to find it. It just becomes part of the day-to-day -day activity for a customer. So when a customer is using Power BI, or when a customer is using Dynamics 365, or even when a customer is using Office and actually clicks on the store button, all of that actually re redirects to App Source. So you list with us once, and this becomes this one center point where actually your app is made available to every end user. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, AppSource.com super super easy. Do book, bookmark this because once you go back, if you want to solve a business problem for yourself, like let's say you're looking for an extension for a plugin for Office to actually do signing, like you can actually come here and say uh, signing for Office, and you might see uh, Office plugins that you can use for document signing and all that. So this becomes this one destination for you to discover the business application. And again, it's uh, since the primary persona for App Source is business users. We want to make it as easy and as seamless as possible for a business user to try, try an app, because you don't want to actually uh, put app source and an app store in front of a business user without the business user being able to know how to get it, right? Because uh, if, if we ask them for an Azure subscription or if we ask them for credits to their dynamic systems, we're going to lose a customer. So what we try to do is we make it as seamless and as easy as is, it's possible for a business user to not just discover applications, but also to try it, take it for a spin, and experience uh, what the app can do for you. So me as an end, end user can come here. I actually say, hey, you know what? I'm actually looking for a public sector application right now. And I can see the application. And as you can see here, I'm automatically signed in with AAD single sign-on. So I'm actually signed in with AAD. So it retained my context that, hey, I'm working for Microsoft. It signed me in. All good and goodness there. I can come here and I can actually say, I want to do a quick trial of this app. You know, so I. So as an ISV or as a partner, this is super critical. So it just feels like one check mark. I'm agreeing to the terms. But what this means is when you list your application with an app source, you register your CRM systems with us. Okay. What that means is it can be dynamic CRM, it can be Salesforce, it can be Mercato. But irrespective of what CRM sy system you use. When a customer comes in and discovers the application and they actually say that, hey, I want to take it for a free trial, we actually write these leads directly into your CRM system. So this becomes part of your day-to-day -day nurturing process. Like, let's say you sent out these monthly newsletters, or let's say you sent out saying, hey, this is coming new. Do you want to write out? So this just becomes part of your daily or your monthly nurturing process. Your sales team can work with them and make the sale and all that. So as you can see here, I agree to the terms. At this point, they will get this partner, which is AppPoint, is going to get a lead in their system that says, hey, Sheffy at Microsoft.com is in, interested in your app. I say continue. I agree to the terms. So as you can see here, we have tight, tight integration with uh, App Source and uh, the ISP you see here. So it automatically recognizes that I'm signed in with uh, my, my Microsoft account. So from a business user perspective, you see how sim simple it was, right? Like I did not have to uh, sign up for another account and then wait for an email to come through and then enter a new username, password, and all that. So it's all very seamlessly tied together with AAD in the center, which becomes a requirement for you to onboard to App Source. But from a customer perspective, Irrespective of the 2,300 apps we have, it becomes super easy to actually try the app. So as you can see here, I can go here, try the app, and all that. So now what I want to talk about, it. hopefully that gave you a little bit of a taste of what App Source is. So what I want to spend some time on is how you can actually build trial scenarios like this. Okay, Because uh, what, what we have seen with App Source is apps that's doing really well in App Source is the ones that have actually enabled 
test drive or a trial experience. And we do understand that uh, enabling a trial experience like the one you saw is not, is not trivial, right? Like how many of you actually have apps out there which has a one-click trial? A anyone? OK. Uh, anyone else offer a trial for your app through your website where someone can come and sign up and do a quick trial? No? OK. So what, what we want to do here is we want to make that easy for you with respect to how you can actually spin, spin up your trial. So let me ask another question. How many of you actually have apps that's actually running on Azure, uh, which has Azure components used, like VMs, tech, VM technologies, and all of that? OK. So at the end of this, uh, I'll actually show you how you can enable a one-click trial or probably a few-click trial for those apps, basically. So, so first and foremost, so this is like a decision tree which has been helping me and also the ISVs I talk to with respect to figuring out which route do I take? Like, how do I enable the trial, trial actually? So it's super simple. So as, so as you can see here, since you want to enable that seamless experience for an end user to come in and experience app, you, of course, need to enable AAD single signer. And I do see folks taking uh, pictures. So I do have a blog post that I just posted like a few, few hours ago. So I, do, I, I will show, I'll show you guys where the blog is. That blog does cover all this content as well. So, so, so as you can see here, first, first and foremost, you do need, you do need to enable AAD single signer. And one of, that's one of those re requirements for us to onboard you into App Store. So this documentation, this step-by-step -step guidance on how you can do it, so we can help you with that as well. But with that said, once you actually figure, figure out that, hey, I have enabled the AD single sign-on, the next step here is basically figuring out what route do I take to enable the trial experience, right? Because uh, the first one is I have components that actually go into Azure. And I did see a few, few folks raise their hand. And that's one. And the second fork there is fig figuring out but I also integrate with business platform with my, within Microsoft. Like, I do extensions on top of Dynamics 365. I do extensions on top of Office 365. So how do I do a trial that actually combines all of this together, right? Because a business user who's coming in might not have subscription to all of this, right? Because you can't expect them to have a Dynamics subscription, Office subscription, as your subscription for a trial to work. So based on that, what, what you need to do here is if you have extensions that go into the business application, the route you take as a dev developer is the one you see on the right here, uh, which is basically uh, where you register the work workflows with us. So what we have done in AppSource is AppSource has just gone preview as of today. In, uh, in we made available something called an AppSource test drive framework. So what that test drive frame framework does is you can bring in, if you are an Azure ISV, you, you can actually come in, bring in your ARM template. Are you, are you guys familiar with ARM? as your resource manager, ARM templates? OK. So uh, let's say you have all your resources available, which can be bundled together as, as an ARM template. Okay. So you can actually come to us with, uh, with an ARM template. And actually, you can give us con configurations around saying, hey, this is my app, which is an ARM template, which, which comprises of VMs, which comprises of websites, which comprises of CC as Azure. But I don't have a full trial for it, because trial for that might mean, with data isolation, it might actually mean a multi-tenant SaaS app, right? And that might not be your business model. But you still want to enable a trial ex experience. So at that point, what you do is you take all of this together, you give us an ARM template, and you also give us additional metadata and configuration that basically says, how long do you want the trial to be? And again, all of us know that, let's not kid here, like not all deployments can be done fully using ARM. Because there are lim limitations that folks know where may maybe you need to wire something in AAD, which you can't do with ARM. You can, of course, lay out the topology. But once the topology is laid out, let's say you want to push in some demo data. So in the case of demo data, you can't do it fully with ARM. You, you will have to do custom scripts and custom configurations and all that. So that's where our app source framework comes in handy, where you can actually use ARM for laying out the topology. And then what you, what you can do is you can give us custom post configuration scripts, so which almost becomes like this. Uh, configuration that we run for every deployment that actually happens. So you come to us, you tell, tell us saying, hey, this is our ARM, ARM template, which actually lays, lays down the topology, which actually has a, a website, a SQL database, a VM behind the scenes. And, and then you say, once all of that is laid out, run this custom configuration that basically wires the SQL with this VM or registers my website in AAD. So that becomes a custom script that you can run. So what I'm going to do here is right, I'm actually going to switch into a similar ARM template. Since it's just half, half an hour session, I'm, I'm not going to go build this, because I think I might need an hour to basically build this for you. So, so as you can see here, this is a sample ARM template for an app, which is a pretty common app uh, schema that you can imagine, which is basically a website and a SQL database. Okay? So, as, so as you can see here, uh, you register with this ARM template with us. 
And of course, since this is a trial, you don't want to land the user into this empty instance. You want to land the user into an instance with some demo data and all of that, so that the user gets a feel of what the instance is. It comes, comes pre-created with some demo data set. So you let us know where the backup is. You give us things like what's admin creds and all of that. Then going, going down, what I want to talk about here is, of course, you, you can specify what do you want the SKUs to be. Do you want it to be S1? What kind of a SKU you want us to use for websites and all of that? And what becomes very interesting that I, and I want to spend some time on is basically the last few steps here. So, so as you can see here, right? once you define the ARM templates and there is standard schema for defining an ARM template, what you do here is this is where you actually specify the additional post configuration steps you want, want us to run. So once you lay out the topology, you actually t tell us saying, hey, you know what? Uh, this is going to be my final endpoint. So similar to what, what you saw earlier, once the app gets registered in App Source, when a test user comes in and says, I, I want to do a trial or a test drive, we should be able to take the user somewhere, right? So this becomes the endpoint you configure with us. So after every de deployment, we route the user there. And what we also, also do here is, you can actually give us a, a post-deployment callback URI. So this can, of course, be how many of you are familiar with Azure Function? OK. So any operation that you can actually do in Azure Function, you will be able to do, do from here. So what, what this means is any post-deployment configurations you want to do, you can actually define those to be an Azure Function. And these Azure Function gets run as part of uh, the setup. So we, ra so we run the. ARM templates, set that up. We run this post de deployment configuration, which can, of course, be an Azure function, but it doesn't have to be an Azure function. This can be a custom API that you expose. So you can actually stand up a custom endpoint, which basically has some operations behind the scenes, and AppSource can actually call into that custom uh, HTTP endpoint you, and, uh, you host as well to actually do some post deployment configurations. So once you do all this, what happens to all this? Right? Like, How does AppSource know how, what to spin up, when do I spin up, or how long do I spin up? So once you define all of this and you actually also have the package ready with, with your source code and all that, you actually go through something uh, we call the publishing experience. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, open up a similar application that we have and just quickly walk you through how does this all come, come together because uh, it, it can't be that easy, right? <laughs> so as you can see here, so the so sec section that I'm going to talk about is the one that's here below. So, so as you can see here, you come to us, and this is what, uh, if, if you have gone through the publishing process where you actually publish an app with AppSource, this is what we call the publishing portal. And as you can see here, you tell us how many hours you want the trials to be. Because it's an ARM template which is being spun up for a user, we should know how long we should keep it running, right? So you tell us how many hours you want the trials to be. And we want to make sure the experience for a user is very seamless and very easy when they come and say try, because we don't want to make the user wait for like hours until they get a new instance, correct? Because then the user is going to lose interest and he or she is going to go, go away. So you also tell us how many hot instances you want us to keep. So what that means is at any point in time, we keep that many hot instances running. So for this specific uh, partner that's out there, they have set the number of hot instances to, to, to two. So what that means is for the first two users that come through, the experience is going to be very good. They click on the button, they get the trial trial instance. Okay. The the next setting you see there. Let me just make sure I don't show the user email. So so the next next setting you see there basically says uh, number of instance per user. So that basically says how many test drives can I take at max? Be because you don't want the same user to keep keep taking your test drive and finally using up all your inst instances. So here you can actually say a user can only take the test drive once. The, the next setting basically talks about how many concurrent instances do I want to run, because these accrue as your cogs, because these are your as your app, and that's actually running in your sub subscription. So you actually tell us how many instances you want us to go at max. So it means at this point, you are saying that go at max up to 10 instances and keep two, which is hot. So, so what that means is if you have five concurrent users that land on your site, the first two users will get this very good experience where the user actually clicks on the button and gets the trial. For the remaining three users, they actually be deployed on the fly because you have said that we can deploy up to 10 instances. We deploy it on the fly, and guess what? If you're going to deploy an ARM, and folks who have used the ARM templates know that if you're going to deploy it on the fly, they're going to leave because it's going to take probably 15, 20 minutes for deployment to finish. So you can't expect a user to stand in a site for like waiting in a site for 15, 20, 20 minutes. So what we also do is when you register this with us, you, 
Okay, thank you. So we we also you 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 also reg register the email templates with us. So we do notify the user saying, hey, you know what, uh, your instance is ready at this time and you can go start using it from here and all that. So that's basically a quick snippet of what uh, what this framework can do for you. While this is all ARM-based, ARM if you integrate with the business app application similar to what I talk, talked earlier, you can also define logic apps. How, how many of you are familiar with logic apps? Okay, so you can actually define your own log logic app and you can actually even integrate logic app with the same framework. So the logic app basically has the steps of all the orchestration that we need to run. And at the end of that logic app, we basically land the user into some endpoint you register with us. So irrespective of how your app is made, this becomes super easy for you to enable a trial. And this you can use for enabling trials for any of your app. And it can even be linked out from your websites and all of that. So thank you for stopping by. And I think I'm getting kicked out of here. So we do have a session which we have pre-recorded, which is part of the or channel, channel 9 workflow where we actually go in, in depth, in detail into uh, what, what this is all about. That's one. The second thing, since I did talk about the, the blog, so you go to appsource.com, you'll see a blog, and once you come to blog, there is a blog post we put out saying public preview of AppSource test, test drive framework. This basically talks about how do I get started, what's the workflow, and then finally links out to the Channel 9 video and all of that. So hope to see you guys uh, enable test drive soon. Thank you.